Good evening. Everybody, welcome. Thank you very much for joining us tonight. This is our second annual open forum to hear from the farm owners in Wellington. This is the Equestrian Preserve Committee. And before I go any further, okay, so the microphone's not working very well. Hold on. And they've all moved the chairs back. <laughs> <laughs> they, think, they think we're going to give them questions in the front row. Right. Is that better? <laughs> that, is that better? Can you hear me now? Yes. Better? Okay. Is it? Can, can you hear me? There we go. There we go. Okay. Yay. <laughs> I don't talk very loud either, so that's, that's fantastic. Um, I'm Jane Cleveland. I'm going to introduce the committee, and I'll say again, welcome, and thank you again for coming to our second annual open forum to hear from the Wellington farm owners. And before we begin, let's start with the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, I'm going to start by introducing our committee. We are a volunteer committee. We are appointed by the Wellington Council. Uh, there are five council members, and each have an appointee, and there are two at-large members. I'm one of those. Um, and we get appointed every two years, and we meet monthly, year-round, so we live here year-round. All of us are horse people, and between us, we cover all the disciplines. Um, I'm going to start with Christy Lund. Dr. Christy Lund is a small animal vet, and she has owned and managed a large dressage boarding, boarding facility in Little Ranches for many years. You want to make any comments? No. <laughs> no, I, no, I do. Actually, I do. Yeah. I do. Got the mic. Um, um, basically, I joined this committee because I feel that Wellington is a special place and I want to keep it that way, and then we all should work towards doing that. Um, I would like to take a moment to thank you, the public, for electing the current council. Um, this is probably the best council that the Question Preserve Committee, in my opinion, has ever worked with, and I've been on this board long, the longest out of all of them. Um, I feel that Wellington's heading in a really exciting direction, and this council listens to us. They look to us for advice, so I just want to thank you guys for putting them in office. Uh, next on my right is Bob Bushy. Bob, uh, Bob is, uh, Bob's <laughs> children have ridden, but Bob actually managed the South Florida Fairgrounds back when it was the horse equestrian venue in this area. Um, and you are still on the Polo Club board, is that right? Still on which? The Polo Club board? Yes. 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 Do, do, you, do you have any, uh, just a few comments? Yes. Uh, we started coming here in 1978 when my daughter was showing horses and uh, liked it so well. We've been coming back every year since. Uh, I've seen a few changes made around here, <laughs> and uh, uh, some good, uh, mostly good, few few I didn't care for, but uh, I love the horses. I've ridden horses all my life, didn't show, but I've ridden horses, uh, and uh, I wanna keep the horses around here and keep the horse community going. Thank you all. Uh, next is Glenn Fleischer, who's one of our newer members. Glenn is a retired marketing executive and lives in Palm Beach Point South. He rides our wonderful trails and he sponsors and owns competitive jumpers. Hi, everybody. Can you hear me? <laughs> uh, it's, it's great to be here. I want to build on what Christy and Bob said and just... Uh, tell you how thrilled I am to be able to be part of this committee. We've got a great committee. We're only as good as the community, so thank you to all of you for being here tonight and helping us, guide us, give us your input. We've, we've also got, uh, beyond a great council, we've got a great staff and a great group of people to connect to within the staff at the village, and we're grateful for that. So uh, with that, thank you very much. I look forward to hearing from everybody. Thank you. To my left is Rachel Adaman. Rachel is uh, a rider herself. She and her daughter both ride hunters, and she is a cardiologist. Here. Oh, oh, okay, thanks. Um, 
It has been a pleasure to serve on this board for now my second um, term. My family and I moved here in about 2000. I didn't think I'd get back into riding. I rode originally in Texas. I love it, and now my daughter's grown up riding and she absolutely loves it. We've also gone to the schools here in Wellington and have been lucky to be part of such a fabulous community. Thank you all. Next is Annabelle Garrett, another new member. Annabelle is a polo player, has her own farm here, and um, her daughters are hunter riders, or jumpers. So not much to add, but yep. Uh, moved down here in 2013. Uh, I've been coming to Wellington since 1986, so every winter for the Equestrian Festival, and um, was a show jumper until four years ago when I made the switch to polo, but my kids still jump, so I live at both the showgrounds and the polo um, fields on seems like a daily basis, so. <laughs> Next is Carlos Ariano, who probably knows more about the Equestrian Preserve than any of us, because I think you were the first one here. And he arrived in the 70s and created his own Southfields real estate company to um, market and sell the farms. And he and his children and his grandchildren all play polo. Hello, I'm Carlos Ariano, like uh, Jane said. I came in 1979 because of polo. I play polo for a while, my horses got old, my kids are playing and my grandkids are playing now. And I'm very happy to serve in the committee and the whole idea of this committee is to make Wellington a better place to live. Thank you. And last, um, I am Jane Cleveland. I am a competitive dressage rider and I grew up in Miami and spent my, the bulk of my career in Nashville and would come here to compete and got terribly, terribly homesick and now I'm grateful every day to be back in South Florida and just absolutely love Wellington and I will do everything I can do to help this equestrian community. And I have a lot of, um, I've done a lot of land use work in my uh, career, so here we sit. Thank you very much. We depend on hearing from you all. We do the best we can at um, knowing what we know across the disciplines to take care of this community and this industry and this preserve, but we need to hear from you as well and all of your neighbors and friends too, so thank you. The format of tonight is, um, oh, big mistake. I forgot to introduce our staff because we couldn't do a darn thing without them. Um, on, my, on the right there, uh, Mike O'Dell is the head of planning for the village of Wellington. He knows more about the equestrian community and how the farms work and how, how, what goes on with livestock waste removal and the manure topic, which is the most challenging one we face and, and so all of South Florida faces. Um, next to him is Ryan Harding. He's an assistant planner. He's been our uh, committee secretary for many years, but he's moving up to assist Mike. And then third on the list is DJ Heplowski, and he is our newest secretary. Anything from you all? We're good. Thank you all for being here. So tonight, I'm gonna give you a summary of what we did last year, talk about what we've done since then, talk about some new topics, and then we're gonna open it up for questions and answers and comments and suggestions. Um, normally we, when we are ever in City Hall and we have public hearings, which we have frequently on land use topics, there's a three minute clock. We're not gonna do that tonight, um, but I'll rely on all of you all to understand this. A lot of people have comments, so um, keep your time respectful. Um, so starting with just an update, uh, last year, we gave a presentation on the plan of action, which was a <laughs> plan of action, a two-year project um, with the goals of looking ahead to see what we can do to help the industry and help the preserve. And it covers such topics as promoting the industry, infrastructure, things like golf carts and trails, um, a lot of work on zoning. Um, the zoning code is being being rewritten still. It's been about a year and a half in the works, but um, Wellington zoning code was copied from Palm Beach County and they the staff has decided we need our own zoning code, which we absolutely do. And so they we're almost finished working through that and we spent quite a bit of time looking at that, the part that applies to the preserve. Starting this year with this, we have a new committee um, as of the summer 
uh, every two years we get reappointed, we looked at the plan of action that was approved and went through it committee member by committee member and talked about what was the most important thing to address. So we put it on the top of our list for this year and uh, the topics to look at sooner rather than later. And there were three major topics. Livestock waste disposal, which is gonna be top of the list forever and ever probably. That's a difficult subject and we'll come back to that. Um, we have just, we had talked a lot about partnering with the schools and the, uh, the school system as a way to introduce the children of Wellington to our activities. Uh, there's 60,000 residents, um, many of which have nothing to do with the horse industry and, uh, and don't know as much about it as we would think. So Carlos, if you don't mind, will you give just a quick report on our uh, visit last night? I'm sorry, do you, do you mind just giving them a quick update on our visit to the Education Committee? On the, the update to the Education Committee. Oh. Um, yesterday we met with the Education Committee and we proposed to them that they can come uh, to see any of the polo games from Tuesday to Friday, free to the schools. They asked me if we can cover the expense of the bus of the school coming to the games. I told them that we will take care of that. And um, the whole idea was to get the kids involved in the equestrians uh, activities. They will understand a little more. They will go home and tell their parents, take me to, to a game or take me to the jumps or to a dressage competition on the weekend and, and have uh, our neighbors in Wellington join us during the activities. Uh, I thought it'd be a good way to promote the sport and a good way to reach the residents of Wellington through the kids. If the kids like it, the parents are gonna come with them. And we spoke to the committee and they were gonna take it higher to see if it's possible for them to come this year. We only have March and April. Uh, for the games, they said that they were tight with the test and the end of the year, but they will make it a point for next year. Uh, but we continue pushing for this year. I even proposed to them that we can bring a horse to their football field and bring you know one or two players to show them how how is is done. And they were excited. We were excited too. So I hope that they will take advantage of this opportunity and, and come. Uh, as you know, most of the residents of Wellington haven't been south of Lake Worth Road. They probably don't know everything that is back there. And we were trying to get them involved and get the residents involved and in coming to the games and participate. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, the th a third topic, um, has to do with our continuing interest in monitoring and supporting the industry because without a successful uh, competitive industry here, we don't have the rest of the, the, the pieces of the preserve and the farms and the competition environment. So we have been talking about producing something like a state of the industry report that tracks attendance figures across the disciplines year to year. Not doesn't have to be in much detail, but just so we have some facts as to is the, uh, is the attendance up or down year to year so we can pick up a trend if we've got, um, if we ever have declining numbers. Um, we've also talked about a little bit about um, um, marketing and branding and promoting the industry further with the help of our expert here to my right. Do you mind adding a little bit to that? Sure, what we're trying to do is, you heard in some of the introductions, some of the kind of observations of how special Wellington is, and what, we, what we'd like to do is build on some of the work that Palm Beach County Tourism is doing to promote Palm Beach County, but take a slice of that, if you will, with their help and blessing, and use it to leverage helping the rest of the country and other parts of the world to understand how special Wellington is from an equestrian standpoint in particular. 
Thank you. Sure. Our fourth priority coming out of the plan of action was to look at some infrastructure improvements, namely Lake Worth improvements, perhaps widening, and South Shore Boulevard, perhaps widening. Uh, between the uh, horseshoe traffic and the preserve traffic and general traffic, the intersection of Lake Worth and South, South Shore um, may need some attention. So that's on the top of our list to look at with the staff and the engineers, of course. So those are our priorities for the year. Before we get into public comments, there's one other subject that I want to cover tonight or we want to cover tonight. Um, and it's a, it's a tricky one. Um, and there's been recent developments that, that we want to make the, especially the preserve owners aware of. Um, it has to do with, it's, it, it actually, the, the current situation has to do with livestock waste removal. Um, but the topic has more to do with general land use. Florida state statute 604.5, and I'm not a, lawyer, not a lawyer, not a land use lawyer, I'm gonna do the best I can here, but there's a, there is a Florida state statute that covers agriculturally used properties. It was, uh, put, it was put in place in 2000, Mike, correct me, 2010 or 11 has evolved over the years. Um, um, as it has evolved, uh, different municipalities have reacted to it differently. And most recently here in Wellington, one of the farm owners challenged the village's interpretation of that state statute. That legal challenge went to the fourth district court. The landowner won, it was appealed, the landowner won. It may go to the Supreme Court. Um, but I wanna read you the statute and I want you to understand um, what this is all about because it's got fairly broad implications for Wellington and the preserve land use. Bear with me, Bear, okay, uh, louder. Bear with me, this is, this is a law, so. And I need my glasses. <laughs> this is 604, Florida State Statute 604.5. It's not very long. Non-residential farm buildings, farm fences, and farm signs. Notwithstanding any provision of law to the contrary, any non-residential farm building, farm fence, or farm sign that is located on land used for bona fide agricultural purposes is exempt from the Florida Building Code and any county or municipal code or fee, except for code provisions implementing local, state, or fe federal floodplain management regulations. A farm sign located on a public road may not be erected, used, operated, or maintained in a manner that violates any of the standards provided. And there's further definitions. But what that says, if land is used for bona fide agricultural purposes, it's exempt from municipal code or fee. So this is all very current. But it, what that essentially means is because of this state statute, Wellington zoning and permitting does not apply to agriculturally used properties. I'm talking slow because I want you all to think about that. Um, what that means is no zoning and zoning covers things like setbacks, like where the uh, building is placed related to the pop property lines, where the manure bins are placed, um, the number of horses on a farm, number of animals on the farm, um, no permitting, so a barn can be built without a permit, uh, temporary tents, wherever, however many you want. The only thing that Wellington can control is water quality, drainage, and flood management. The state has regulated that the water that comes off the properties, and that's got to be a certain minimal level, um, has got to have a certain, uh, there's a cap on the phosphorus level. And as we all know, horse manure yields phosphorus. So that can be tested and maintained, but that is the only regulation that Wellington has. This is all very new and it's, uh, it's a lot to think about because without any regulatory authority 
for agriculturally used lands. Wellington, Wellington which is about 80% built out, um, those farms can add to their property and then new farms can be built at will. Um, I don't, we don't have an answer for this. This is all fairly new and um, there are other communities like ours in Florida that are ha facing the same challenge of small farms in, that are designated ag they're agriculturally used lands, but they're small lands um, and they're in a more urban environment and so how to, how to handle those is a, is a challenge that's coming up with the state in, in more communities than ours. Um, we here have talked a lot about making Wellington world class and keeping Wellington world class. And that applies to all the venues and it applies to all the farms. We, we all know we, 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 are, we are a world class place and that's why we have set the number of competitors and the class of the competitors and the class of the competitions. So the question is how we remain world class without any authority to regulate the land use. There, we, there's no, there's no, this is a new question, this is a new situation, and there's not an answer. I'm not, we're not proposing anything tonight. Um, some potential solutions are just leave it as it is. 90% of the people do the right thing and are kind neighbors and thoughtful neighbors, but there's the 10% that aren't. Um, we can go to Tallahassee and start changing the laws, and the possibilities are, um, coming up with a new classification that um, gives Wellington some regulatory authority, um, and that's possible, but that's, that's gotta be um, desired by all of you. I'm, I missed one extremely important point. Everything that I'm talking about has nothing to do with your tax exemption, absolutely nothing. This is all land use. The tax, your, your ag classification and your tax exemption is separate and apart from what this discussion. Um, and a third option is um, HOAs. Um, by the law, uh, uh, um, neighborhood association rules prevail. So while the state statute prevails over Wellington, if there's a neighborhood association, for example, Southfields has their own rules, those rules are, will, are upheld, those rules apply. So again, that's, I, I, this, is, this is a small education presentation just to let the community know what we are all facing. And there's, again, there's not an answer. It's something we'll all be looking into, but I'd, we, we wanna make you aware of it. So, without any firm comment about any of this, let's, um, let's just dive right into public comment. And we, after the public comments, um, we will all respond again. Um, and uh, just as just to fill you in how we handled this last year is we take notes and our next meeting will be solely to go over everything you said and see what we how we can best respond to all of that. So we have a microphone up there and we are here all night and would love to hear everybody's comments. Who's first? You've got a good, you've got a better voice than I do, yeah. <laughs> I didn't want to screw with your machinery. Thank you. Uh, I'm Michael Whitlow. I live at 2070 Appaloosa Trail. I've been here since 90, 91, I can't remember. Um, and um, I have a eight stall barn and I've been riding horses since birth. <laughs> it seems like it. But <laughs> at any rate, um, I have two points that I want to make. One is I think it's time that we hold the developer of the equestrian shows feet to the fire and fix Pearson and South Shore. Their plans, here's, 
he said he, there are plans available that he's agreed to, and every time he gets away with not doing any improvements, because, well, last year he had a good one. There was a state-mandated uh, emergency for uh, opioids. Hey, Michael, can I interrupt you? And Mike Odell, would you mind just giving a quick talk on what he's talking about? Just make sure everybody understands. The, um, when the state of Florida declares a, an emergency uh, that is statewide or specific to an area such as our South Florida area, that gives an opportunity for a developer uh, to postpone any of their improvements. It's, it's one of the... Imp uh, and, and do you mind going, going back to the, what the original agreement was? The, um, so, so anyway, so the, the, the opportunity is arrived for a developer to postpone those improvements. The uh, improvements that Mr. Whitlow is, ad is addressing is intersection improvements at South Shore Boulevard and Pearson Road have to do with turn lane improvements and the widening of that intersection to uh, move some more traffic through it. So that's what he's, uh, he's addressing at that point. It, it seems that every year that the village manages to give Mr. Bellissimo a variance for that intersection. And as I said, last year there was a statewide emergency on opioids, the drug, which I don't think really has anything at all to do with the intersection of Pearson and uh, South Shore. I mean, I might be wrong, but I doubt it. And um, I also think that we, we <laughs> there is a large traffic need to connect G Mishway with 40th. That's in the plans, it should be done. I mean, <laughs> this has been going on for years and years and years and years and nothing has been done. And the village grants variances like uh, eating M&Ms or something like that. Uh, and uh, frankly, as an equestrian and as somebody who occasionally drives around the village, I'm a little sick and tired of it. It's about time we get off the off the sitting down and uh, and get the job done. The and I, I and I think it's this committee and I was chair for a number of years has a lot of influence on the village of Wellington and has the opportunity to move something like this along and it is very very important. And it hasn't happened yet, praise the Lord, but there's gonna be an accident at Pearson and mm -hmm. South Shore. You know it, I know it, everybody who rides horses knows it, and let's do something before it happens, okay? Number one, those two intersections. Third, or second or third, whichever, it doesn't matter. I think it is time that the village turn and we turn and we get the village to do it, the equestrian preserve into a conservatory. Um, that way, the, in a, there is a, becomes a, almost impossible to build on there. You can't take land out of a conservancy and it, 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 it holds things together. It's done all over the country. And I think it's time that we go from a preserve to a conservancy. And uh, I think it would be the best thing in the world for the equestrian committee to push this through. I think it would be the best thing for, um, for the village of Wellington so that we are secure knowing that somebody isn't going to take a chunk of land out of the conservancy, otherwise known as the equestrian preserve, and, and turn it into a uh, sh shopping mall or whatever. I mean, I'm not even gonna say what could be done, but if, if, the, if the, the preserve is so precious and so important, and I believe that it is, let's keep it that way. And we have the power to do it, and that's the way to do it. And thank you very much. Thank you very much. Good evening, my name is Cynthia Gardner. 
I tried to watch the meeting last month. I wasn't able to attend, and it wasn't on TV. And when I called the village the next day, they said, we're not going to broadcast the meetings live anymore. Is this true? Mike? The council approved the other night uh, some ADA requirements, so we're trying to comply with that. So we, when we get the equipment to comply with that, we will bring the live uh, videos back together. But right now they're, they're delayed one, about one day, 24 hours. So they will be coming back? That's what council indicated once the equipment is installed, yes. And do we know when that is? No, I do not know. I think that's important. You know, the village has always held itself up as being very transparent. And I spent six years as chairman of this committee, and I was always surprised at how many people watched it on TV. So for us not to have it on TV live, I think would be a big shame. Thank you. Thank you. Shorter than they are. <laughs> I'm Carol Coleman. I live at 14224 Stroller Way. I actually am right behind the equestrian center. And the traffic on Pearson Road is a, just awful. Either you leave before 4 o'clock or you come back after 7 o'clock because you cannot get in and out of our development. And it's in a travesty. We shouldn't have to worry about Pearson Road and South Shore or the extension of Jean Mish Way to, it's not called 40th Street anymore, but I really think that this needs to be taken care of and opioids have not got anything to do with this. The hurricane that was in the panhandle had nothing to do with this. Something else years ago had nothing to do with it, but every year we allow this situation to continue and it's time to stop it. Thank you. Thank you. My name is Carlton Saunders. I've been here since 1988, ridden horses all my life. And uh, one of the things that came out of that long statue you read from the uh, Florida, um, putting new, uh, or taking regulations away that we're able to do, did very clearly state that we could still control our own manure management and waste management. Mm -hmm. We'd have to do anything as far as the state's concerned. And um, I agree with all these other people about the, uh, the audit has been going on for years and years and years, but right now we have a major issue with um, environmental impact of manure. And I think that's extremely important uh, subject. Uh, the other subjects are just as important, but we've been beating those up for a lot of years. This subject is something we have to address now. And um, there, I think there's some people here that have um, uh, offerings that they'd like to present, present to the town uh, as, as future regulations of, of how we can handle this, this problem. Because it's only getting bigger, it's only gonna get worse. So I think we should uh, try, to, try to look at that at this point. And um, if, uh, if one of your people wanna get up and explain something, uh, uh, about what they're what they're thinking about, but uh, I think that was uh, what, from what I understand, and you you said it was the number one issue at this point, um, was going to be uh, the manure uh, situation, the problem, and uh, I think we should listen to it now. And I've heard there's some other people who have some ideas also. Thank you. Hi, I'm Shelley Townsend. I'm Todd Minicus. And I've been addressing this for many, many years, probably 10 years now. And I'd love nothing more than to supply a solution. Mike O'Dell came and visited our plant with Mark Lissima. We built it, we tested it, Todd tested it, try on, Daniel Blumen tested it, try on, it was tested by Amos Spadone at the National Horse Show. I took it to Churchill Downs, Dale Romans tested it, it, here's samples of it that I brought. This is used, obviously. Do, do you mind describing it? Pardon? Do you mind describing it? This is the used. Okay. And then this is 
<clears throat> two and a half year old material that was recycled that came from Haven Shot and her other half Fred in Kentucky. This is three weeks old that was recycled. Um, this is new and this is the color restored even further. This is more cost, effect, or cost expensive to do this. The other we plan on selling it. This is, um, if you do a comparison, that's out of a stall after it's been mucked and it's been in there for a couple days and here it is after it's been recycled. The phenols are removed, there's no allergens, there's no dust. We can sell it for 10.25 a yard, an eight cubic foot bag for 354. Um, vets have seen it, Todd brought people to see it as well and it's closed loop, there's no affluent discharge and we had offered it several times to the county and to Wellington for 1.97 and that included a couple years of licensing fees and all the equipment. And I heard from the meeting last time, I was kind of disappointed that the, the process being presented cost eight million and I've been trying and trying to have people listen and see this. We, we are getting ready to open in um, Ocala. We've been welcomed by Marion County. I cannot say how wonderful they've been to us. And so we'll be opening up our plant there in just a few weeks. But we did run this and we do know that it works. We ran it for almost um, 18 months, and that's when we supplied it. And I'll let Todd say a few words. This has been a, a eight year project of mine, um, being involved with this, and, and we sure have uh, one solution. I'm sure it's the, the ultimate solution, but it is a solution. Um, it also is one of the, the greener options because if we can reuse the shavings, it's obviously, uh, less original material that's being cut down um, by a, a tremendous amount. Um, I've used the shavings at horse shows that we found the, excuse my language, we found the shittiest shavings we possibly could find <laughs> and ran them through our system, cleaned them. Uh, they come out sterile through the heat process. There's nothing that can survive those temperatures. Uh, and uh, it's something that everybody should consider. Thank you. Thank you. I have a question for you. Okay. The biggest concern has always been that manufacturers cannot operate because we're such a seasonal type of town. What would you do in the off season? No, that's, we, we scaled it so that we could operate year round. The equipment is, is that way. And then I've heard, well, what if you can't scale up? We can support it on 1,400 horses alone, all the way up to um, 500,000 yards a year, operating 24-7. So it is very flexible. Okay. Operating at the beginning, what I told you, would be 125,000 all the way up to 500,000. And it's very simple to add in lines. Are you, are you building a plant here? No. We haven't been allowed to build a plant here. We tried, I tried for many years. We're building one in Ocala. And we built one in Kentucky as well. Carlos? If you have one in Ocala, uh, what do you need to put one here? I, that's a good question. I would love to take your waste and have you put it on the rail and send it to us. In a rail? Yes. We looked into it. And there is an opportunity for all the waste to go on rail up to Ocala. So we will continue with our trucks into in the farms, and these trucks will go to a transfer station, or they go straight to the rail. Either or. It would have to be organized. Right. But there is a need. I mean, Ocala is three and a half hours away from here, so there is a there is room for a plant here. There is also room for a plant in Miami. The demand in Miami for that? Pardon? There's enough demand in Miami? Absolutely, absolutely. Um, Gulfstream runs almost yeah, year round. The Paul racetrack Meadows. as well as all the local stuff mm -hmm. in Miami. Yes. And, that, and that's, a, the fact of the matter is, is the horse show and the surrounding farms around the horse show 
are are one of the smallest uh, problems. You, you have to consider that the racetracks, the two racetracks, uh, plus all the equine activity south of here, Palmetto, um, Palmetto, mm -hmm. um, and it's a big deal, really. What's the name of the business? Equine Eco Green. Okay. You can find us online, <coughs> equineecogreenus.com. Have you run the numbers of how much will it cost um, per cubic yard to move the stuff from the barn to the transfer station to Alcala? Yes, um, my removal partners have that. They have that information, but they did do all that, yes. Okay, is that better than what we are spending right now, or is it gonna be more? Um, I can't, I don't wanna lock myself into that because it's a whole another year since they ran the numbers and I tend to stay current. I do know that um, if it was to go in, if we were to have a company like this and we sold a license and we worked with the haulers, they should be able to reduce their prices and help with some of the costs by making a, you know, a combined package with the services. That's what we're doing in Ocala. Our haulers are offering a reduction in removal cost and then we're, offer, we're very cost effective and cheaper than anybody else with the shavings. So we could follow up with you offline from the meeting this evening and get more information on process and economics and that sort of thing? Yes, absolutely. And Mike has seen the whole thing. He filmed it. Oh, terrific. How does your solution eliminate a transfer station? I think that you need to work with both. It's my belief. You, can eliminate it, but I think it's better because I think it, that would monitor um, the illegal dumping. I think that that needs to be harnessed. So that's just my opinion, but that's not, I'm not here to. But as far as I understand, you're not eliminating that aspect. It could be eliminated. How? If you had a plant, everybody. Under understood, but um, w w why then don't you um, take your technology and build a plant, um, I don't know, I think it's, I think Mike O'Dell, um, you said something now that all manure um, uh, land would have to be on the 95 corridor, is it, did I make that up or is that correct? Uh, right now the way the county has it set up, it'd be on industrial lands I'm and that'd be on the I-95 and the turnpike corridors. Right, so is there a reason that you don't want to um, buy that land and set up your factory and do that um, so that one can A, be closer than a rail car and eliminate the need for a uh, transfer station. I'd be happy to address that. We've come here for 10 years. And if everybody sitting here, and I know Mike that's, is very familiar with us, they allowed, they made a rule and they allowed properties to be used for recycling centers out in the EAA. This got approved in February. By the end of April, it was taken away. I had some um, disagreements with my partners because they wanted to go ahead and do land, and I said, let's wait and see. This has all backfired before. So there were some people that were out of a lot of money, and it bit them pretty hard. They invested to go out there, and then it was rescinded. I mean, now that's- Vegetable I, I, farmers, I believe. But I, have, but I have a question for you though. One, one of those that got approval out there um, has subsequently gotten approval on Pike Road in the industrial dis, uh, area near the Turnpike, I guess. Okay. Are they a competitor or do they- I don't know who it is. Uh, Horizons 880 LLC? Sorry, um, I don't know what they're going to be I doing. I think they're recycling shavings. Yeah, they are. So they, just- they put, you these, a, they put in an RFP with, okay. this, with the county and they just want it. It's on, on Benoist Farm. I, I can tell you that I just know that we're offering a solution. I can tell you 100% that what we have, our technology, we do own our patents and we are legitimate. I can promise you that. It is our technology. Thank you for working on that. We, it's, we, we've got to figure out something, so bravo to you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thanks for listening. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. There are Eco Green and the other places, Horizons 880. Who's next?
Good evening. My name is Guy Herbrecht, and I'm uh, also in charge of the Anglo-European Stud Book. We have a property on Trotter Court in Wellington here since 2010, and there's a couple of things I would like to share with you and a couple of questions as well. Last year, in this place, I said we love Wellington because it is the winter capital of the equestrian sport. I also warned everybody, and I said, if we go on like this, we have to be very careful because we're not alone in the world. You have other parts of the country, like Ocala, which is developing very well, and you have the Sunshine Tour in Europe, in the southern part of Europe. You have Doha, where there are also contests, and these people are now competing to get our riders, our horses, our global horses and riders to their destinations rather than to come to Wellington. If we go on like we're doing, we're probably going to lose that competition. Not next week, not next year, but we have to be careful and we have to take a number of actions. That's why I was very, very pleased to hear that you're preparing, or at least that you have discussed, a state of the industry report and also a marketing plan. And I would really encourage you to move now from the thinking and the discussing to the action stage so that by September you can roll out this plan and also include in the state of the industry report a, um, an, a nice uh, evaluation also of not only the number of people that are coming here, but also the supply and demand of stalls in our area here, including the stalls at the showgrounds. And I don't know if you're aware of that, but the increasing number of stalls at the showgrounds, plus of course people building farms at their, uh, barns at their own properties, but mostly the, the increasing number of stalls at the showgrounds is depressing, is finally starting to depress the prices of the properties in our area. So it's gonna affect step by step the tax base of our area. So I hope you realize that and that you have a sufficient a dialogue based on your industry report with those people who can affect mostly and most easily the number of available stalls versus the number of required stalls for the top period of the season. That's one suggestion. Then I have a number of questions. And the first question is, a couple of weeks ago we could see on the television um, that there were problems in Okeechobee County of the water quality and that they had a problem that they needed more money to build sewage, public sewage. I'm not talking about the septic tanks. Huh? So my question is, what is the quality level of the water in the canals in our area? Is there a similar problem or a similar problem coming in our direction with the water quality in our canals because it is going to affect the water that we give to our horses. You know, you can have the best systems in place, but if the, the basic water is not good enough, it percolates, it gets into the grass, and the horses eat also the grass. So that's a first question. The second question, I don't know at what time yesterday evening you started closing the windows. Yes, Mark. Uh, I, I saw this morning on the television again that uh, they were talking about, well, you know, there were some burnings. Well, there are more modern techniques now than this burning, with, uh, which they're doing on some farms a little bit up north. Um, yesterday, I talked to a gentleman from Colombia. In Colombia, they, they made this illegal to use this kind of technique some years ago. Here we are in the United States, we're still doing it. And there are other ways to do this in a more cost-efficient, and a climate efficient way, because you can remove that and, and the, the, uh, what you remove can be then used to create bioenergy. So we have to look at the whole picture. Instead of polluting some things in a, in a, in a, in, in a nearly archaic way, whereas there are new techniques to be uh, used to improve on that. Um, the last question that, that I then had uh, or have is, about uh, uh, the finishing of some hacking trails. There is, um, on Trotter Court Draft Horse Lane, 
it's like a circle, there is a trail that goes in the middle of that area. But it starts on trotter court, it ends on draft horse, and that's it. So it's not even a hacking trail, it's just a sort of, you know, uh, a path that goes beyond some properties, but goes to nowhere. And I would really ask if it's possible to finish that so that it connects to the hacking trails to the showgrounds. Mm. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Bef while we're still on this topic, Mike, do you mind addressing the water questions? The burning, we don't have any control over. That's out of Palm Beach County. Um, I, first, I guess the, the, the water quality question from the village's point of view, we have uh, sampling points that we do throughout the equestrian preserve area and, and also through the rest of Wellington. So we vary, our discharge levels are, are by permit, 49, 40, 49 parts per billion uh, at our discharge levels, which is along the Southern Boulevard uh, corridor, they go into the C-51 canal. Um, we have higher levels than that as you go south uh, into the district. Um, and they vary obviously during different times of the year. So we're coming out of the dry season, going into the wet season, we'll have higher discharge levels at this point. But on an average daily basis, we will be at our permit uh, discharge levels. So it, it varies. Um, uh, our water quality is, is improved over the, over the years, but it still remains um, in, in, as far as compliance goes, we, we are compliant with our discharge levels, but internally we have some imp improvements we could do. Um, obviously, the burning is not something we're in control of. That belongs to the state of Florida and, and other areas. Um, and the trail I think you're talking about is the Brown Trail, which we just completed the connection uh, from uh, Charter Court and along the, maybe I'm missing it, but I thought we had, we had connected that. That was on the east side of uh, Paddock Park 2. Am I, is that correct? So that trail now comes down, it comes along the C-15 canal, goes westward to Wellington Trace, and then from Wellington Trace it goes along the right of way to the Blue Trail, and that connection was made. So that, that trail's been completed. Yes, sir. I believe you're talking about the trail that is from <coughs> Trotter, connects Trotter to the Draft Horse, and then we have a, um, I guess, a, uh, a pathway that connects to the uh, um, Friar Lane. I'll take a look at it. I don't, right now, what's in my head, I guess, is the Brown Trail, and we, we did complete that connection, so. What? Could you please come to the microphone because this is being filmed? I have the results of the TDM, our TMDL levels that should be under 400 counts per 100 milliliters. The highest concentrations recorded were 33,000 per 100 milliliters. Test samples were taken from January through April, the height of the equestrian season in Palm Beach County. The West Palm Beach Canal water body was verified impaired for fecal coliform because more than 10% of the values exceeded class three water body criterion of 400 counts per 100 milliliter counts for fecal coliform. To ensure that the fecal coliform TMDL was developed based on current conditions in the canal, that recent trends in the water quality were adequately captured, monitored, monitoring data collected from January 1, 2004 to June 30th, 2011 were used to develop the TMDL, high fecal coliform concentrations <clears throat> exceeding the fecal coliform criterion were observed in January through April. It should be noticed that the, noted that the highest fecal coliform concentrations were observed in February with 8,636 counts per 100 milliliters and April with 33 counts per 100 milliliters. Where was that testing done? This is all um, by the county and was on public record. But would you know where, what land? Because we've got lots of- West Palm Beach water, uh, the West Palm Beach Canal water body. Which could be areas beyond Wellington. Mike. Would you like to hear? Yeah, um, Mike's more the expert, but Palm Beach County has got a lot the of- The C-51 canal doesn't just take in Wellington. It yeah, takes in Royal Palm Beach, Foxhetchy Groves, the acreage. 
Um, so there's there's a lot of land that goes into that uh, that that canal, and it right. flows uh, westward now into the the uh, stormwater treatment area. I'm just giving the test results, and as you know, Dr. Loud has done a lot of studies too, and I have those studies as well. Thank you. Next. Hello. I'm Justin Hickey. I'm in charge of JH Hauling and Services. I run the transfer station that everybody's talking about on 50th Street. I guess the reason I'm here is to uh, say I take it personally. I think it's a great idea for Wellington. I've been doing this for over 30 years. Last year, unfortunately, I lost a dear friend in a horrific accident, put one of my trucks in the canal because we're rushing to take care of things in season, do the right thing for our clients and our customers. The transfer station to me is more of a personal dream and a goal. I have access to 129,000 acres through local farmers who agree, sugar cane farmers, who all have stepped up for the last 10 years, helped me personally, helped Wellington personally solve and deal with this problem. I know Gary I've, or Glenn, I've heard you say that you think it's something's going to change down the road. It's not. They want it. It's beneficial. I have to follow more BMP guidelines, nutrient management plans, and because of the farmers, stricter rules and regulations. I have to keep it away from the water, 100 yards, 100 feet, on the canals, everything. I have spreaders, tractors, equipment out there to deal with it. I have to spread in 48 hours and take care of business. I've done the right thing. I've always done the right thing. My business has been successful in Wellington. This year I lost one of the biggest accounts. Don't know why, probably over money, but I know it's, some of it's being illegally dumped, some of it isn't. I, um, I'm here, I've been here in Wellington since 88. I grew up being a private duty nurse. I started my business as kind of a side job and grew it into a big successful business because as I got bigger and bigger, I knew I was having problems taking it and getting rid of it. That's why I approached the farmers, the sugarcane farmers. For them, it was a win-win. They give me the property, I get to spread it on their fields. They get the benefits of crop growth, less pe pesticides, herbicides, less fertilizer, because it's mostly carbon. There's not enough manure in it or not enough phosphorus in it to really help with anything except it helps hold water in sandy fields. As far as I've been around the country, seen a lot of great ideas. Depends on the money. If you want to spend eight to $10 million, you can turn it into jet fuel. I've actually seen Shelly's idea. I think it's great. For a couple million bucks, it can be up and running. The problem is land in the county. It's so expensive to do it in an industrial area if, if the cost is prohibited. You're not going to make a fortune in tipping fees or unless you recycle it properly and then you have a market for it. And for me, it's worked out well because the sugarcane farmers, they want it, they need it. I'm trying to help Wellington. I've got a few of the haulers here. They all love the idea. Right now, I'm taking it from 90% of the haulers. They're all doing the right thing. They're bringing it to me. It's making everything easier for everybody involved. Do you mind describing the, the, what you're talking about, the new operation? Um, dump trucks come in, single axle, small dump trucks, usually 20 to 30 yards. They drop it off. <coughs> We have a concrete slab and a loading ramp. Um, I have 18 wheelers come in, which are called walking floors, about 110 yards. So as the dump trucks come in and dump, I've got loaders loading 18 wheelers and taking it out to U.S. Sugar. It cuts the traffic by fivefold. For every five trucks I take off the road, it's one 18 wheeler. The traffic's always been going there in and out of Wellington anyways. Now it's just a little bit different because everybody's dumping in a confined area and it's all going out to a century live to the farms and being dealt with properly. I have men equipment out there. I have men and equipment at the transfer station and I'm happy with the way things have gone. I did have a couple hiccups over the holidays, Christmas and New Year's. There was quite a bit left on the slab. I didn't anticipate take people not wanting to work, but the holidays were here, I couldn't help it. I did clean up. I did find out somebody did run my loader at 5.30 in the morning through the computer. So for that, I apologize. I did say it would be from 7 to 5.30. We did put asphalt on the road to help with the dust. 
I know we've agreed to some other terms and conditions to help hide it and eventually put up a building if things go well. And I'm just trying to prove concept and point that it works and it's helping the haulers and the industry. So that's all I wanted to say. I have a quick question for you. Yes. Um, as far as I have read, been told, um, with our new governor, there is a big likelihood that the manure will not be able to be dumped anymore on Florida sugar land. Um, how then, if that is the case, where will... Well, if they change that rule, they'll have to change it for bag ass, chicken manure, horse manure, cow manure, any kind of manure. My attorneys have told me that's not gonna happen. U.S. Sugar's attorneys have told me that's not gonna happen. Because if they do, they'll have to change it for all the land and any application on any field. This is considered bedding, not horse manure. There's not enough horse manure in it. It's 10% if we're lucky. Is this in the courts already, or is this something that um, that's gonna no, start with, with the governor? They're and gonna rewrite the rules for the EAA. They have to change them for everything, not just one thing. And I doubt they'll do that. And then I could be wrong, if, you know, I don't know. But I could be wrong, so. But I've been told that that would not happen. There's too many farmers out there that need stuff in their fields. Every year they harvest, they lose they lose soil. I'm helping replenish fields. Wood turns, you mean it turns to dust, carbon, so. I have a question for you. I actually went out and watched it and um, the big trucks are going to the west. How do they leave Wellington? Flying cow. Okay. They go so they the go back way. 50th? Mm -hmm. Okay. So, thank you. Thank you. Hello, my name is Hawking Gangness. I live at 13783 53rd Street Road. Um, I'm a resident of Village of Wellington as well as a registered voter here. Um, first, I would like to ask the committee, um, obviously they are in uh, existence and um, of the transfer station. Did the committee ever ask for an environmental impact statement? If so, can I get a copy of that to be reviewed? I'm gonna ask Mike because they're, they're um there were engineering approvals. For what, what's the environmental impact statement for? What, what are you looking for? Uh, fire protection, storm water, public health, groundwater, air quality, fees, liability, um, and also investigation requirements. If you wanna make a public records request, we'll provide you what we have. Okay. Uh, oh, by the way, an idea for you, Carlos, if you bring the kids over to the during the week, give them vouchers maybe for a half off or a lower discounted rate if they come back during the weekend. Might be an idea for you. What is it that you offer, I'm sorry? Oh, when you bring over the high schoolers. If, you have, if they come out to the field, to the polo fields during the week, give them a little voucher, a little coupon for a discounted rate during the weekend, you might increase them coming back. Just an idea for you. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Um, I've heard the argument of a pre-existing nuisance. I would say that has no uh, precedence in this matter. Yes, the nursery has been there for years as an agricultural um, operation, but yet the moment that they began supporting the transfer of manure, that entity changed to a commercial. At that point, that should have been uh, submitted for permitting as well as uh, meeting all the requirements of the Village of Wellington Ordinances, Florida Mission Code, as well as Florida Statutes. Um, that's why I asked for those impact statements um, I would also review the bona fide um, in the agricultural. Yes, the building code might not apply, but other regulations would apply. Uh, pollution prevention, storm water, um, all that would apply um, to various entities. Um, in terms of the Transfer station, uh, I think there's a zoning constraints uh, in the preserve. They are now commercial, that's not allowed per the uh, 
EZ, OD, um, as well as uh, Florida Department of uh, Water, South Florida Water uh, Management District. Um, A few requirements would be financial responsibility, uh, fence secured, setbacks, containment, stormwater, operational trainer, training, um, anticipated waste codes, um, closure plan, as well as uh, emergency plan, as well as a perimeter road for fire trucks, uh, in case there is a fire, monitoring wells, and gas monitors. Um, these are all precedents that should be considered when granting this entity to be uh, here in the question preserve. Um, it is a solid waste and should be uh, handled as such. Um, I don't have any questions so far. Um, I would like to point out there's also an equestrian trail that is right up against said property. Um, and 18 wheelers are going back and forth. That's very dangerous. I think someone had already commented on this earlier. Um, as well as the village should think about non compliance with the uh, village of uh, Wellington ordinances and parking of commercial vehicles on set property without any uh, land development. In records to the manure processing, I would ask uh, if it complies with all Florida administration code requirements, um, 627760, as well as uh, for horticulture, it must do 62709.530 through 600. I was curious if it meets all those requirements. In close, I would like to say Florida relies on groundwater for 92% of its drinking water. As such, it has the most stringent rules in the country. Um, and I ask of the council, in accordance with your equestrian overlay zoning district, all applications within the equestrian preserve area must be reviewed before the planning, zoning, and adjustments. So it's up to you guys first to say no before them. And I ask you to do so. Um, if not, I would request a temporary restraining order for them to cease all, all operations. Um, I don't know who I should contact about that. This, this was not brought before the question preserve committee, so we had nothing to do with it, Mike. I don't know why. And why was it not brought before? It's an agricultural activity. Uh, Yes and no. It was before as a nursery. Yes, it's kind of in the same realm, but as soon as they started receiving it, they are meet the requirements of Florida Administration Code 62-701, 709, and uh, 730 for hazardous waste as, um, as well as transfer station requirements. We're, we're Livestock we're, waste is a is not classified by the state of Florida <laughs> as a solid waste. I wish it was. We wouldn't be talking about it. Um, I can show you on my iPad the Florida Ministry Coach that talks about. Uh, all the manure, as well as uh, solid waste and the classifications, if you'd like to discuss that. You can do it offline, if you have yeah, to. Let's do, let's do it outside of this meeting. But thank you very much. Any other comments? Um, no, not this time. Thank you. Hello, I'm Marco Spignoli. I'm on 2171 Cottontail Drive. I just had a question um, on the dirt road. I think it's 50th or Indian Mound. 
Um, I know the manure trucks are going in and out of there, the 18 wheelers, which is fine, but I would just ask that if they can pass the machine a little bit more often. It's every three days now, and by the second day, it's the trailers and the horses are uh, pretty shaken up with the way the roads are. I don't know if there's a possibility for at least every second day. And especially since there's a sign that says no trucks more than three axles or whatever, and we're using it. We'll, look, we'll, we'll work on that, thank you. Could he, uh, could you, is that a possibility for the machine to be more often? More grading, more grading. The grader? Yeah, yeah. And what about, uh, is the plans to pave it at some point or no? Paving of 50th Street to yes. flank out road? Yes. That's a whole nother subject. That is not, right now, um, no, it is not. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much. Yes? Hello everyone, how are you doing today? My name is Jose Gomez. I'm the president of Wellington Agricultural Services. I've been uh, the owner of the business for the past 15 years uh, and we are uh, one of the haulers uh, in our industry. Just wanna say that uh, our industry is uh, in very um, shaky times right now because of the waste and where it's going, where it's not going, uh, who's picking it up. Uh, it's, you know, it's a very, uh, big competitive market uh, for us because you know Wellington is a big revenue stream for uh, uh, that has be turned into a big revenue stream for all of us. So um, my uh, solution is to become a completely green environment for our equestrian industry, where zero waste will be taken out of Well Wellington it will be used for uh, something other than just dumping it on the ground. Um, I think that. Uh, our time is in need of uh, something new, something where basically we could have something energy efficient, where we can have a revenue stream for our community, um, streamline our process, because realistically, manure removal is one thing. Uh, we can make it, basically make it a perfect environment where we can uh, clean up after ourselves uh, after the season, because I think the biggest uh, complaint after the equestrian season is over is all the mess that is left behind because of the equestrian waste or any other waste that is generated during the season. So if we uh, came up with an eco-friendly uh, you know, process where uh, we can take our waste and generate income off of it or maybe you know, help out uh, environmentally by you know, it coming out already as compost uh, from your farms, uh, to basically going to one sector and using it as uh, energy and fuel. So I think that we're a large enough entity. I think this is the biggest um, equestrian cluster in the whole entire United States. Um, and there is no reason why we haven't come up with a solution to become 100% green and not produce any waste, um, any residual, any smoke, any emissions. The technology is here. It's been here for a while. It keeps getting better. Um, I am working on a few projects myself um, after you know seeing all the great projects that have been presented, but I feel like um, our industry, it is expensive to put a plan up like this, so I have gone back to the drawing board and I believe that there is uh, technology out there that can be placed on your actual farms that is completely quiet, um, no smoke, no emissions, no water, no waste, and within 24 hours of putting in your waste, it reduces it down to 70%, and then within 24 hours you have a clean biofuel that you can either use yourself for your property, or you can have a contracted company come and pick up your waste, your compost um, from your actual you know, farm. So, Is there you know, a name for this? I'm sorry? Is there a name for it? You said it's out there already? Um, the, the product is called a digester. Digester. And basically it's, uh, it's a technology where, you know, and it's used in restaurants and used in, um, in 
all kinds of applications, but it basically takes all kinds of waste and turns it into a biofuel. Mm -hmm. So, is that what the restaurants are doing with their oil? That's a similar. Yes, yes, the black oil and all yeah, that yeah. and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. This is basically, um, you know, what what we can do here is, you know, everybody says it's you know eight million dollars, ten million dollars. Yes, trust me, I've been after that for a couple years now, and I know that it's not easy to raise all that kind of money. Um, so what is a better solution is, you know, why not put it on the actual farms? You know, a lot of people are bothered, you know, depending on what time I go to their farm and it's making noise or, you know, we're riding right now or, you know, not today or we couldn't make it. You know, there's a lot of variables in our industry which makes it, um, you know, very costly for us, and at the end of the day, we, we work very hard, we work long hours, but the amount of money that we're left with at the end of the season um, does not let us survive over the summer. So, you know, I, th I think that it's time that we make a change. Uh, I am having an event on March 21st at the Wellington Club that I would like to invite all the equestrians, and basically the topic is gonna to be how, how does the equestrian waste impact our community? The other one would be is how can we become an eco-friendly equestrian industry? So if you'd like to, if you'd like to have some more information about what our projects are and what, where we see the future of the equestrian waste going, um, you, you, everyone here is invited to come out to the uh, Wellington Club that day on March 21st. At what time? Uh, it is going to be 11.30 a.m. That's at the showgrounds? Yes. Okay. Excuse me, excuse me, we, we are recording this and I, we cannot, ha so you need to come up to the microphone or you need to have this discussion offline, but this meeting is not, yeah. um, not for this. Thank just you. to give you a, my thought on that is basically, you know, we're, we're on the cusp of technology, technology changes every day. Um, you know, you may think you have the greatest shiny thing in the world, but you know, tomorrow something else shinier is gonna come out. So I say that, you know, technology is moving fast. So thank you very much. Thank you very much. There's a lot of other involved. Digester, digester, digester. Anybody else? Biogasification. Do we want to finish up with com comments from the committee? We will, at our next, Jet, we want to speak, please. I guess I'm the, the biggest complainer of the. <laughs> Can we have your name? Yeah, my name is Dave Steffi. I'm Laura Steffi. I've been here since. Can uh, you talk into the mic? Thanks. I've, I've been here since the mid 90s. Bought my place from Carlos in 99. I live next door to the manure transfer station. Uh, I run heavy equipment. I do site development work. I understand the need for master plans. I understand the need for preserving the community. I understand the need for getting big trucks and getting them loaded and getting them out of there. Uh, I don't understand where you put it right in the middle of what the part you're trying to preserve. Uh, I, I, I do get the manure, I'm a self hauler. It takes me uh, three hours a month to haul my manure for over 20 horses. I have a place to take it. it it's not that difficult if there's a place to take it. 
in Wellington, I think, needs to provide that place someplace that's not in the middle of all of our backyards. I do live right there. Um, they've been great at, at not starting the big loaders at 7, but there is a loader that runs every day at 4.30. In the morning. And it hauls sawdust out. And, and the, the truck traffic is ridiculous. You've destroyed that whole end of town. And I've been there long enough to know how long you, what you've done to it. You, you can't ride there. You can't go on those trails. You're talking about building a, a uh, expansion on a bridal trail. That end of town down near the horse show has always been busy. The end where we live was always quiet. And it's not quiet anymore. And if you're going to preserve something, that's south side of town is what you need to preserve for the equestrian community. If not, just run it on out. The one meeting I stood up here once before in my life was paving 50th Street about the traffic that was going to happen on 50th Street once you did that. You paved it anyway, the traffic's ridiculous. All the traffic in Pearson and South Shore is not horse related so much as it is the people cutting through Wellington. And if you, you pave flying cow, it's gonna be worse. I do think there needs to be a transfer station. I do think it needs to be someplace other than in the center of the community. All the dirt that came in to fill all these farms came in 20 yard trucks. And maybe that place could help them. Um, you know, but, but where that, is set up is not the right place. Uh, it, I have plenty of videos. One, one thing about the water quality is, is if it's solid waste is, if it's not a solid waste and horse manure is a bedding, why did I have to build a manure bin and why do I have to have that inspected and why do I have to have everything else, the, the worst water on my property is in my manure bin. It's disgusting. And I have maggots and mosquitoes and flies and disgusting water. I got pictures of it, um, you know, it's gross. So I, if, if that, if it's so bad I have to build this pit and and keep this nasty water to protect my manure from running in the environment, you know, why, why is that not a solid waste? I don't get it. Um, I don't know. Anyway, I, I appreciate you guys hauling all the stuff out. I know it's a hard deal. I'd also appreciate it if they didn't run a loader at 4.30 in the morning every day. Palmetto Mills, are they in here? Okay, y'all y'all finish it up. <laughs> Thank so, you very much. Well, yeah, I'd hope hope we could do something about it because that side of town is destroyed. Appreciate your comments. Okay, anybody else? So we will meet this group will meet in a month and go over all of these comments and see how we can take the next step. As you heard from that one gentleman that lived, um, talked about the trail from uh, Trotter to Draft, um, indeed, a lot of the conversation that we've had about um, tracking the industry and, and promoting it and thinking about Ocala and Doha and other places came from his comments last year. So we do listen and very much appreciate you coming. Any other comments for the, from the committee or the staff? Okay, we're adjourned. Thank you so much. Thank you.